Welcome to another edition of Motor Age How To. You know, in past episodes, we've talked a little bit about performing a relative compression test using a high amp current clamp and your scope. And many of you have asked if there are alternatives to that method. Well, today's your lucky day, stick around. We're gonna talk about those alternatives coming up next. First of all, thanks for watching this edition of How To. I hope that you find it helpful. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, many of you have written and asked if there were alternatives to doing a relative compression test other than using the high amp current clamp. Some of you have asked about using a low amp clamp. Some of you have asked just for alternatives in general. So let's take a closer look at those, starting with the basic capture that I took on the 2013 Ram pickup that we've been using so far as our guinea pig. This way we have a known good, we know what that's supposed to look like because we've done that test more than once already on that vehicle. Let's take a closer look at what we have on the screen here. First, the green is the uh, battery voltage measured directly at the battery uh, terminals, positive negative terminals. The gold is also a battery voltage measured at the positive and negative terminals, but with one difference. Here, I have the channel selected as AC. It's AC coupled, so the DC component is being removed. What I mean by that? If my green trace is showing me a voltage level, a loaded voltage level of somewhere around nine volts, I'm not gonna see the detail of the, of the shift that I'm getting in the voltage drop as the starter current draw varies as I would if I could home in and, and close that voltage gap up. On the gold trace, I'm uh, using AC coupled, and then I'm setting the voltage scale at plus or minus two volts. Now, if I set that on the DC component side, I wouldn't even have it on the screen, would I? So what I'm trying to do is remove that DC measurement aspect and just look at the change, the change. And when I'm doing a relative compression test, that's really all I'm focused on, right, is the change in that signal. So that's why you see the difference here. The blue trace, the blue trace, that's our high amp clamp. That's kind of our known good. We know what that's supposed to look like. Uh, we've done that a couple of times now. And then the red trace is the low amp clamp. Now let me address the low amp clamp right off the bat. On the RAM, there are several cables, as you can see, for me to choose from. And because the jaws on the low amp clamp are so small, I can only get around one cable. Now the cable I'm around in, in the capture that you see is the one to the left of center here in the picture, but uh, um, that's not the cable going to the starter motor. So I got no kind of change there whatsoever. So I began to think about that. You know, the whole thing is we're trying to make this easy on us, right? So first I'd have to choose or access the cable leading to the starter some kind of way in order to get the change in current flow that I'm looking for as a relative compression test. The other factor that comes into play is the working range of the low amp clamp. Uh, in my case, it's 60 amps. But if you go back to some of the other videos that we did, you'll recall that the peak to peak range that we measured with our high amp current clamp was nearly 85 amps. So even if I use the AC coupling feature so that all I would look at is that peak to peak variance, I'd still be outside the working range of the low amp clamp. So since this is, that's way too much hassle to deal with, I'm not even going to consider using a low amp clamp. So for those of you who asked in the past, the answer it turns out is no. Don't try to use your low amp clamp to perform a relative compression test. There are some other ways that you're going to see as we go along though that you can. So let's move forward. Okay, we're going back to the pattern that we saw before. Uh, I want you to notice here in the gold trace, as I mentioned, that's AC coupling. So the DC components are removed. It's on a plus or minus two volt scale on the screen. So uh, I'm getting a much more distinctive view of that voltage change. And you can see how it goes along with the current, right? So as the current uh, increase goes up, the voltage decreases or comes down. That makes sense, right? That's just basic Ohm's law, right? So there is a correlation here that we might find helpful. However, there sure is a lot of noise in that picture. What's the noise caused by? I've got a bad battery connection with my leads, my scope leads at the battery. You know, when you're making these tests, make sure you have a good, clean, tight connection uh, if you want to get a good, clean signal to your scope. In my case, there was some grease on the positive battery cable and it wasn't connecting well to the point I had selected at the battery terminal, so I had to make a few readjustments to clean that signal up. 
All right, moving forward, another thing that a lot of scopes can do is zoom in on a voltage pattern. So that question came to mind. If I don't use AC coupling, if I stick with the DC signal, the green trace that we looked at, and I zoom in on it, will I see the same variations? And yes, you do, as you can see here. You know, I could apply a filter to that and clean that up. I think you'll see they're not quite as clean as they would be as the AC coupling is. So I'm still kind of leading with going with the AC coupling feature. Uh, but if you absolutely don't have that ability, you can, but you can zoom in, then you'd be able to check that and see the same type of thing with a relative compression. Now I will say this too, that I also found out while asking some people who are, more, who are a lot smarter than I am in this, uh, many of them tell me that you have to have a, a high resolution scope and not the, not the monitor that you're using, but the scope itself. In the case of the Pico I'm using, it's a 12 bit vertical uh, resolution tool, which means the vertical resolution is a lot more accurate than say, uh, an 8-bit tool. Uh, some of the older flute meters, for example, where you can see an almost stepped pattern uh, on the vertical when you look at those screen captures, well, that may give you some influence or, or affect the, re re the um, reliability of using this, this particular method, right? So let's stick with, if you have a good, a more modern scope, a newer scope, probably not a, a fa feature for, or a factor for you, but let's move on. Okay, so now, change things up a little bit. Um, I moved the leads around a little bit so we could get a clear little picture. And you see, this is pretty interesting, right? I mean, this, first of all, we have the, the voltage patterns up here, the current patterns down here, and they're, they're almost a mirror image of one another. It's almost as if I, I folded the paper in the middle here and up top is what I have on the bottom, just upside down, right? So let's see where we were connected. Now, here I did something a little different. I went to a, a DLC, or Diagnostic Link Connector Breakout Box, a Bob, and I connected uh, my power or uh, my scope leads to that. Of course, pin four on the DLC is chassis ground, and pin 16 is, is battery voltage. So that's where I'm connected to get this pattern. Again, it's AC coupled in a plus or minus two volt scale. The green trace, well, all I've done is stick with that AC coupling at the battery, the same plus or minus two volt scale. It's a lot cleaner now that I've gotten the connections corrected and tighter. And then of course the high amp clamp here on the bottom. All right, so now what we've done is swap polarity. That's all I've done in this image. I took and, and just switched the battery leads, positive and negative with one another. And here you can see on the bob, all I did was swap the leads on that diagnostic link breakout box. So what am I doing? I'm reversing the polarity, but now I'm, I'm getting the signal to match up a little bit better, aren't I? Um, let's see what that looks like. Now that I've turned that around, uh, you can see that these are identical images. Um, now I've got it mat matched up so that with the leads reversed, when the current goes up, so does the voltage and vice versa. And now I can use it the same way that I did with the relative compression test. I'm gonna look for the odd man out. I can still put that, that reference channel on one of the ignition events to tell me where I'm at in terms of firing order, where I am in terms of which cylinder I'm, I'm looking at. And I can use this the same way. So short version guys, if you're looking for an alternative, if you don't have a current clamp, high amp or low amp, you can still perform a relative compression test Key things you want to have to make sure of, make sure that your scope has a good 10, 12 bit resolution at a minimum if you want to get a, a reliable pattern to look at and use the AC coupling feature on your scope and then you'll get the results that you see here. Well, that's all the time we're going to have for today's edition of How To. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.